the MOAB, developed by the Air Force Research Laboratory, while being classified similarly to other conventional weaponry, is in a league of its own. Why? Its very design and efficiency was geared at tackling some of the crazy new dynamics that technology has brought into the battlefield. Nowadays, it is down to who has the most destructive weapons in existence, and Moab is right up there with some of the best that we have seen. Before we proceed, please hit that subscribe button to become part of our community and watch more interesting videos like this one. MOAB, Moab, not to be confused with the ancient Middle East Kingdom of Moab, is an acronym of a rather comical name of the weapon. To some, it stands for the mother of all bombs. In reality, its technical name is the GPU-43-B Massive Ordnance Air Blast Bomb. That is its designated name. The reason it is called the mother of all bombs is probably its massive explosive capacity. The massive weapon, developed by Albert L. Weimortz Jr. of the Air Force Research Laboratory, marks a tremendous leap in non-nuclear weaponry for the United States military. It is not a new weapon, rather it has been in existence since the early 2000s. Reports suggest that the weapon was initially tested in 2003 in what was a crucial moment in military technology. You wonder why anyone would need such a weapon. Well, the answer is that the MOAB was developed in response to the changing nature of warfare. As wars transitioned away from typical Cold War situations, there was a need for a weapon capable of delivering a crushing blow without the use of nuclear weapons. Albert L. Weimortz Jr.'s work on the MOAB answered this demand by designing a weapon that could serve as both a deterrence and a strategic instrument on today's battlefield. It is such that battles can be ended at the mere mention of the weapon's deployment. This weapon's vernacular appellation, Mother of All Bombs, adds a dimension of geopolitical importance. The term was inspired by Saddam Hussein's remark during the Gulf War, and it represents the interconnectivity of world events and the role that military technology plays in the process. The name not only symbolizes the bomb's great force, but it also connects it to a certain historical era, producing a narrative that reveals just how crazy its technical specs are. When the weapon made its debut, the global scope of military action changed. At that time, nukes were the talk of the town, and there was hardly any mention of ground battles as the scope of conflicts became more unconventional, and major players had a hidden red button somewhere that they would flip and nuke the world if they were pushed hard enough. Hence, there was an increasing demand for a weapon capable of acting as a potent deterrence against non-nuclear opponents. The creation of the MOAB provided the military a capability that might be deployed strategically to change the course of fights. Thus, it became a lethal weapon that is nearly as destructive as a nuclear weapon, which doesn't violate anti-nuclear laws owned by the United States. The MOAB's capacity to inflict massive damage without resorting to nuclear weapons demonstrated advances in conventional warfare of the U.S. and their overwhelming power over potential opponents. How did the MOAB come to be? The MOAB's origins may be traced back to the Blue 82 Daisy Cutter, a powerful bomb used for special ops during the Vietnam War. The Blue 82 was a huge bomb meant to clear densely forested regions, establishing temporary landing zones for helicopters and removing dense undergrowth to expose hidden enemy positions. The Blue 82 was developed to tackle the obstacles of guerrilla warfare in Vietnam's jungles, and it gained the moniker Daisy Cutter because it could mow down trees and plants on contact. However, the weapon would also become more relevant many decades later. The Blue 82 was reintroduced in November 2001 during the early stages of the Afghan conflict, this time against the Taliban. Its effectiveness in clearing large regions and scaring the enemy was particularly of great importance. The bomb's shockwave and destructive power were useful not only in removing physical impediments, but also instilling fear among opposing forces. Decades after the Blue 82's deployment, Pentagon authorities acknowledged the Blue 82's efficacy as an instrument of intimidation. The success of the Blue 82 in Afghanistan fueled the creation of an even more powerful weapon, the MOAB. This conclusion laid the framework for the idea and development of a bomb that might scale up the psychological and destructive capability originally by the Blue 82. As a result, we now have what is the most powerful anti-personnel weapon for ground battles in modern times. Early observations for the MOAB focused around its possible use as an anti-personnel weapon. The approach was consistent with the overall shock and awe strategy that underpinned the 2003 invasion of Iraq. The goal was not just to physically harm targets, but also to inspire terror and awe in the opponent, potentially undermining morale and affecting strategic choices. 
The mother of all bombs, with its enormous destructive potential, was envisioned as a vehicle to accomplish these psychological goals. When fired, the MOAB's route to its destination begins with its deployment from a C-130 Hercules aircraft, which was chosen for its mobility and ability to operate in several theaters of battle. The MC-130E Combat Talon 1 or MC-130H Combat Talon 2 versions of the C-130 are specifically charged with delivering this enormous weaponry. These variations have been altered to fit the MOAB and to ensure a smooth delivery procedure. The MOAB is firmly kept in position within the aircraft by cradles resting on airdrop platforms. The precise planning is crucial to preventing any accidental or early deployment during the aircraft's journey to the target location. The utilization of cradles and airdrop platforms underlines the importance of accuracy in managing such a large munition. As the deployment date approaches, the aircraft arrives at the chosen release site. The delivery procedure now begins a series of precisely coordinated processes. Drogue parachutes, which are to be deployed immediately before the bomb is detonated, have a dual role. For starters, they operate as stabilizers, keeping the MOAB from spinning or tumbling during its fall. Second, they separate the cradle and platform from the airplane in a controlled manner. Following the extraction, the drogue parachutes deploy, launching the MOAB into free fall. Unlike conventional bombs, which use parachutes to slow their descent, the MOAB is designed to fall freely without the need of such a device. This deliberate choice permits the bomb to speed quickly towards its target, increasing its total effect upon contact. The journey of the MOAB is not left to chance. GPS satellite guidance is critical in ensuring that the bomb reaches its target with precise accuracy. This technique allows for real-time modifications to the bomb's trajectory, accounting for elements such as wind or other meteorological conditions. The use of GPS guidance improves the precision of the MOAB, making it a very effective and dependable weapon. The accuracy of the MOAB delivery mechanism has important tactical ramifications. Military planners may launch the MOAB with great precision by utilizing sophisticated airdrop technology and satellite-guided navigation. This level of accuracy is critical for targeting specific enemy locations, deep gorges or cave systems where conventional bombardment may be ineffective. On April 13, 2017, the bomb was used in an attack against ISIS. This deployment was a watershed event in military history, demonstrating the MOAB's capabilities in action. According to reports, the strike killed 94 ISKP terrorists, including four leaders, with no evidence of civilian casualties. However, controversy developed when contradictory accounts surfaced, underscoring the difficulties and ethical concerns inherent with utilizing such a powerful weapon. Also, the MOAB is considerably too expensive, with an estimated unit cost of $170,000. It's important to note, however, that this number is from the mid-2000s and is subject to a variety of factors that might alter the real cost. The MOAB's distinct development process complicates cost prediction. The value was built by the Air Force Research Lab using existing parts, and because it was a crash project designed for urgent demands, it did not follow a regular procurement procedure. If more MOABs were manufactured, issues like inflation, a scarcity of existing parts, and fresh design and testing would almost certainly push up costs dramatically. Let's see how the MOAB stacks up against big bombers like the B-52, B-2, and B-1. While the MOAB is a powerful weapon, it is critical to recognize its limits. The MOAB, in contrast to heavy bombers, is designed for particular targets and cannot mimic the magnitude of a regular heavy bomber operation. For example, during the Vietnam War's Operation Arclight program, the U.S. Air Force launched B-52 bombers on almost 10,000 bombing flights, demonstrating the size and tactical differences between the MOAB and heavy bombers. Moving on to MOAB's pure potency now, it is the most powerful conventional bomb ever used in battle, according to the weight of its explosive material. The explosive output is similar to that of the smallest tactical nuclear bombs, making it a formidable force. To put this in context, the explosive output of the MOAB rivals that of some of the most powerful military bombs in history. Its potency is impressive, demonstrating advances in conventional weapons as well as the strategic implications of such a tool on the battlefield. Although historically, there seems to be a few exceptions that might be more powerful than MOAB. During World War II, the Royal Air Force employed the Grand Slam, a larger and heavier bomb than the MOAB. Their goals, however, differed, with the Grand Slam being a seismic bomb meant to penetrate the ground. More recently, the Russian military claimed to develop a weapon known as the father of all bombs, 
which was said to be four times more powerful than the Moab. These comparisons demonstrate the advancement of military technology and the ongoing search for more powerful and effective weapons. The Moab, with its unique design and explosive capability, is a tribute to conventional weapons improvements. The Moab is a magnificent yet contentious weapon, with the ability to alter the course of a conflict. Its creation, deployment, and impact raise serious concerns regarding the moral and strategic implications of utilizing such lethal weapons. What do you think of this? As always, I welcome your feedback in the comments section below. Till next time!